Hey pals, welcome back to another episode of Pool Box Pals. My name is Monk, and usually with me is a handsome gentleman named Mad, but this week in his stead I got two other handsome gentlemen joining me. Thank you, my, thank you. Oh, no problem. I got my buddy Ray. I say hi, Ray. How are and you? And then uh, Kyle, who's who's a returning guest. How are you? I'm going to tell um, you again right now. First thing. Oh, boy. Like, if I'm having a, an anxiety attack or a panic attack, I'm going to play that intro music. Bro. It, <laughs> it does something to me. We're like, I almost, was, I mean, even here, I was closing my you eyes. You could just, just like, jam mm. that all day. Like, mm -hmm. put some lyrics to it, and you could just be like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> dude, I loved it. Get you in the just the zone. Right, there you does. go. Yeah, I mean, just a peek behind the curtain. I can see like all of our uh, screens down here, and while like that intro was playing, we were all like very <laughs> much just, just grooving to the music. That's awesome. Which I wondered is, if you could see me. Yeah, I mean, me and uh, me and Mad do it every week. It's it's good. It gets you hyped, you know. Positive, high energy uh, comic book music. That's what I hear when I walk into the comic book shop. That's that's what that is. But yeah. Anyways, how are you, a uh, fine gentleman, doing? I'm doing good, and I promise that my head is not this big. <laughs> Bro. I'm gonna do this. Like eventually, I'm just gonna be like this. Well, hey go. guys, that works. There we go. You got to put something there to size it next to, so we're not like, dude, this guy has a ginormous head. Yeah, Kyle's just sitting a little close to his mic. We had to uh, figure out a, a situation last minute, but yeah, no, it's all good. Your your head looks great. Thanks. Everyone's head here looks fantastic. We all got great heads. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, boy. So Kyle, you've been on before. Um, we just had a fun episode just chatting uh, comic books that we loved and your, a little bit of your history. And uh, before we get into today's topic, Ray, since it's your first time on the uh, podcast, would you mind uh, giving us a little bit of a dive into your history? You don't look too thrilled about it, but... Uh, no, let's do it. I'm... Uh, uh, dude, yeah, I think... Uh, I can't remember what happened last time I wasn't able to join you. I think I had some family stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, so, yeah, thanks for having me on this time. I'm super yeah, stoked to be course. here. One and... day we'll get uh, all four of us. I don't like that my power keeps surging like that. It's done it once before. So if all my stuff shuts off, fantastic. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's good to have you. I'm glad you can make it this time around. Dude, super stoked to be here. Um, so, yeah, I got into comic books with pretty much with Kyle a long time ago. We uh, graduated high school. We moved out to California and um what was that little local shop we would go in and see? I don't know. This is what I was telling him last time. You couldn't remember? It was like a hobby shop, remember? And the comic yeah. book section was like a tiny little corner of it's it. It's in the biggest place ever for no. comics. Did so. they get like uh, new stuff or was it more of just like what a guy found and brought to his shop? I mean, I, I would be more than happy to just trample all over your comic book history here, Ray. <laughs> but, uh, no, go for it. Dude, right ahead. I can't even remember if they had. Yeah, like, well, it's been. It, and just to be honest, like at the time, I wouldn't even have known about like new releases or pull lists. Like I just yeah, went yeah, in yeah. and took whatever was on the mm -hmm. wall. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember when. So my shop has a deal that if you have five series like in your pool box, you get like um, a discount on when you check out. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, OK, when I was first getting into it, I was like, OK, like I'm going to try to I'm going to like go to the wall and find like five series that like I want. And I went back and this is where I first heard of like the concept of mini series. I, I said like, Oh, I want this Dr. Strange, you know, whatever it was. And he's like, Oh, that's only a mini series. So that doesn't, he's like, that doesn't really count. And I'm like, okay. So like I just ended up like started adding pools and eventually like just started giving me the discount naturally. Like, I don't know how many ongoing series I have, but he knows that I'm there every week, like buying his, you know, I'm buying comics as many as I can get or want, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really cool to, to have that relationship and yeah, just to, uh, to, to have a good shop that like is informative and will help you like along your journey instead of just being like very cold and dismissive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I will say like the shop I go to now, like is fantastic. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. I love all the guys that work there. Super friendly. And like, 
I think right now I, I, when I walked in, I went today actually, and I walked in and, um, I was talking to the guy Ryan there and like, I'm only pulling, I think two series right now. And he's like, dude, you're only, pull, you only have like two books you're pulling right now. And I was like, yeah, I know. Um, but a lot of the time, like I'll forget to put stuff on my pull list. Mm -hmm. They're super cool where I can just text them and I'll just be like, dude, I forgot to put this on my list and I see it on the wall. You just posted a picture of it. Can you put it in my box? Yes. And then they'll be like, do you want me to add it? And I'm like, yeah, add it. Cause I will forget. Like I'm terrible at, at adding stuff and taking it off. And so, um, they're, they're yeah. great, though. I always forget to uh, tell them to add mini series because with minis, it's like, you don't really know if you're in until like issue three, really, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So yeah. Kyle, you look like you got something to say. I'm just going to repeat what I said last time I was on. The system is broken. Yeah. That's, That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's just how it is. And hopefully know, things will start to balance out. I mean, comic books now, I did, would definitely say at least issue number ones are like always four ninety nine. You know? I think that mm. was a, at one point that didn't that seemed kind of rare, but now it seems like it's pretty yeah. consistent and like even some series like going into being like four ninety nine through the whole thing or more, you know? Maze the only Book ones I know that are less are Mark Millar and Saga. Oh, is Saga less? What's Saga? Saga was two ninety nine for the longest time and then this year they just raised it, it's three ninety nine. Oh. Hmm. Well, it's a bummer, you know. I mean, I wonder why the image was able to do that with whatever that comic is called. I always call it the wrong name. Uh, Fight Club? No, Night Club? I can't remember. Yeah, the, Fight Club, it's definitely not Fight the vampire Club. Vampire one, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. If, uh, for people who watch, they know that I'm an idiot when it comes to this comic. <laughs> but uh, uh, forgive me for any new viewers. Um, yeah, so did you... What? How long was that? Like, did you go instantly into, like, Marvel and DC or... Were you pulled towards indies? Like, I think I was more into the major, the like the big two. And mm -hmm. like I dabbled in it for the longest time. I never really like dove deep into comics until like right before COVID. And then when COVID hit and everything was shut down, like my comic book shop was still open. And that's mm -hmm. when I like, I had nothing else to do. I was, you know, like, I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm going all in. And then I started reading all these indie stories that I like had no idea even was out there. And that's what even drew me in like even more. Mm -hmm. And so that's when uh, like I knew Kyle was like way hard into it for a while. And um, he actually started the comic book lair. And I think he, you had one episode out, right? One or two. I think I had. Yeah, two. Yeah. Like just solo. Yeah. yeah if you solo. go back, it's just me solo. And it's like, uh, <laughs> it's not good, but they still <laughs> exist if anyone's interested in hearing them. That's interesting. So I had I used to have on my own uh, comic book podcast as well, but I just like didn't I tried to do that live, but then like trying to just talk to myself mm. um, and like, you know, people that would come on and just it it was it wasn't as fun as like having a dialogue about it. You know, I I definitely appreciate that over just me being like, this was a good comic. This was a not so good comic. It's you all know? about the back and forth. <laughs> mm hmm. All yeah. about I mean, yeah, it's very important. Um, I, I guess you know I did. I we we weren't able to talk about this last time, but how how did you guys meet? I can't remember if we did talk about that last time. Do well, you go to school we together? Yeah, we met in the um, summer before ninth grade. Like I had just moved to Arizona, he had just moved to Arizona, and um, I don't know. We just had a ton of stuff in common. We were we were jumping off cliffs in the water together we were way into video games at the time so we would just we would just pull all night we were in a backyard wrestling for a while like we did some <laughs> we did some weird stuff man and um, That's awesome yeah it, you know like you have those friendships and uh, that like once in a lifetime friendships mm -hmm. and not to be all like sappy but sure like we've been like best buddies since we were like 14 years old and yeah. um it's just one of those friendships we're like been riding in the same car to, with with each other forever mm -hmm. and um so yeah it's been great and we're always like usually into like the same stuff yeah we'll, we'll, we'll drag each other into the same stuff sometimes mm -hmm. and um that's great so yeah so i don't i don't want to say he drug me into the comic book layer but i was like at no. first i was like oh dude i would love to like maybe like come on one time as like a 
a guest, you know, but deep down I was like, bro, I want to be like, I want to be the co-host. I want to be on there all the time. <laughs> and then he was like, dude, let's just do it together. And I was like, yes. And so, uh, yeah, we've been hammering it hard for like, how long Almost two years now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been fun. Awesome. And I don't know if you remember it this way, but that little shop that where we first got into comics together, you're the one who was the, it was your idea. You were like, my hey, memory dude, is terrible. Let's go get comics. And I was like, comic books. All right. And then, yeah, that was all you, man. Hmm. I wonder what we had to have watched some type of movie that sparked our interest Definitely. because we, we would go down these, like we watched like Lords of Dongtown and then all of a sudden we wanted to be skateboarders. <laughs> <Longboarders>. dude. <laughs> So that's a <laughs> hold on. Did you say Law Lords of Donk Town? Donk Town. Did uh, I say it wrong? No, I would just I might have oh, heard it wrong. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of Donkey Kong being like <laughs> one of those uh, original guys who I invented. hope you said Donk Town. <laughs> or like, dude, like for instance, like this is like Kyle's and I's like ultimate like thing we wanted to do in life forever in high school we watched gone in 60 seconds oh my god and for the longest time we had a goal we're like bro before we die, we die. We're, <laughs> we're stealing a car <laughs> it was like a goal we had like we have to steal a car before we die it's oh. gonna be the best thing ever <laughs> We oh, get amped man. up. We amp each other up, and it's yeah. not always Good. for the we best. We feed off each other, and sometimes it's bad. But um, yeah, anyway, that's sure. kind of my backstory. <laughs> that's how you got in the comics. You yeah. were uh, out running the fuzz one day, and you're like, maybe yeah. this, <laughs> no one will expect anybody in a comic shop to steal yeah, yeah. the car. We'll be, yeah, we'll be incognito in there. It's a very oh, chicken goodness. devil's sort of comic book origin. <laughs> yeah, <Wow>. yeah. <laughs> maybe. Good, good. Swinging it back into comics. Good job there, Kyle. Um, yeah, so you know, we uh, we uh, just we were talking about what we wanted to chat about on here and all that fun stuff. And since it's a little bit, I mean, it's over halfway through the year now. The month's almost done, but uh, yeah, we figured we would just kind of do a little bit of a recap of 2023 and just chat our favorite comics that we've been reading from this year. Maybe some ones that we didn't get a chance to. I mean, we haven't gotten a chance to talk about a lot of these comics together, which like I'm kind of looking forward to mostly. Yeah, like, yeah. I've said a lot of things about a lot of comics, but it would be fun to like just uh, you know, um, yeah, chit chat together. So yeah. does does anyone want to be uh, this I feel like a teacher in class. Does does anyone want to go first? Any well, volunteers? I w I will go first, but this might be a little bit of a sidetrack, and I apologize for that. And if you want to shut it down, you shut it down immediately, Monk. I will. I'll be like Negan. <laughs> You'll be like, not happening. I, wanna, I will. Sorry, I want to know because I haven't got to talk to you about it, and I think you're the only other person I know uh, who's read the whole thing. But you weren't thrilled with Phantom Road? Uh, I just felt like it was like part one. Like, and... Uh, yeah, I was just, it, it was enjoyable. Like everything about it was good, but I was just like, okay, I guess we're just like, there was no story conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. And like, there was all just set up for the next arc and like I, on a worse writer or artist, there's a part of me that's just, I don't like when com, com I don't like when any medium exists to just promote the sequel, you know, whether that be, uh, uh Avengers age of Ultron you know, which did that just was like set up. This is everything that's going to happen, you know, and then also Ultron's here. Um, but yeah, like I, I really liked what's happening. I, I like even just like the fact that he's like this born, the truck driver is a born again, Christian and like dealing with the trauma of stuff, like stuff that has happened to his kid. And yeah, it's like, you don't kind of see those narratives often in comic books. Um, so I'm excited about that, but I just felt like you just told me a bunch of things, but like there was no gratifying ending to this, you know, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, I hear you. But weren't you just like, why is there a walking animated bear all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, but I think I was, I, when, well, I guess maybe it's, that was a little bit ruined for me because I do listen to this uh, podcast sometimes and they review comics ahead of me <laughs> and uh, I'm too lazy to skip over spoilers sometimes. But um, I, I, that the suspension of disbelief insofar as like that the world isn't just like these zombies was when they got to that diner and there was like that normal dude who was just like talking normal with them. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, this isn't what, it, this isn't just as simple as like zombies walking around the, the desert, you know, 
um, there seems to be, and it's Jeff Lemire. So I'm like, there's got to be more to this than just this. Um, so yeah, like, again, like I thought all of it was cool. I enjoyed it, but like, I'm in it for the stories. I like, I like a good, like conclusion, like, and then being like, okay, now what's next? You know, yeah. I just, I just didn't feel like I got that at all. What did you, what did you get out of it though? Sell me on it. Tell, prove me wrong. I liked the mystery of it all. I mean, I get mm. that it kind of left you there where it literally could have just been, okay, the next issue. There wasn't really an arc. It mm -hmm. just kind of kept going. It, it was weird for, for the ending of an arc. Yeah. Uh, but I liked the unfolding of it. I thought, thought you got to learn a lot about the FBI agent who was uh, – is she an FBI agent? The, the girl who was, like, kidnapped and then that – she read the file. Yeah, she's something like that. She's either FBI or CIA, one or the other. Yeah, and her whole backstory and then w the big reveal at the end, at least that was a big reveal for the ending of the arc where that thing's an egg. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting because it kind of reminded me of um, what's uh, the, I want to say the Legend of Tomorrow. That's not it. I don't even know what that is. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, legend, that's a TV show. Uh what is oh my goodness it reminded me of that will smith movie with zombies uh, i am, I am legend. Legend. Yeah. Legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that those zombies are like somewhat sentient in their i don't know the the movie's a little bit different in the book in the book they have like their own society and he's mm. kind of he's the legend because he's like this like folklore of things that come in and just kill people you know um so like this comic definitely had a little bit of that to it at the end. When I saw that egg, I'm like, oh man, what if these are like just, just like pe people and beings or whatever? And I think they might even have hinted at that earlier in the um, comic, right? I think so. maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, but, no, they did. Okay. Yeah. So I oh, think. Oh yeah. So how does that tie in? Right. So we'll we'll find out. <laughs> He's like, right. We'll find out in like the second arc because, huh. and I wish like I again like I would have been fine with it if it they would have just if he would have pitched it as like this is um this is part one you know but anyways before we go too far down this rabbit hole That's all I, yeah yeah anything else you wanna you wanna say about it before I force it uh, Ray no. to say something let's go dude I will say like I really do enjoy Jeff Lemire but mm -hmm. there's sometimes like some books he, like. I know. I'm like, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want to hurt Matt. Sometimes mad the, like the slow burn, and then there's just the payoff is just like you're just like, well, okay. Like I don't yeah. know. I always want something else, but there are some like that Jeff comes out that are, have been like some of my favorite reads. So yeah, um, yeah. I definitely got a little uh, burn on them, but I think I was consuming too much and expecting too much too mm -hmm. at the same time um, because of how phenomenal like his comics can be um yeah but yeah so how about how about you ray what's some what's something you got into this year that you really enjoyed yeah um one actually that um mad actually turned me on to when i was listening to um an episode of it was could have been at the end of last year because i think this uh started at the end of uh last year but then the majority of it was put out this year was uh gotham city year one from okay from tom king did you read that at all or no nope I don't think I don't think you read that either, did you? I did not, dude. It was just this like I love Gotham, and it was just this dark, gritty like detective story. Mm -hmm. I mean, Batman was in there, but it like that was the only thing that I thought was weird. Like they were trying to throw Batman in like at the end of a few issues where our main character Slam Bradley was like telling Batman this story, mm -hmm. so it, like tied him in. But it could have just like I, I don't know. I loved it. Super gritty. Um, a little dark in some areas, but um, I don't know. There's something about just Gotham and uh, that whole universe that I just love. And um, right. it was it was super good. Have you ever heard the theory that uh, Batman intentionally keeps Gotham like horrible so that crime doesn't fall out outside of it? He just maintains crime within it. And he essentially allows that mm. area to be like the area of sickness instead of allowing it to like pour out into the entire United States. That ties into that penguin one bad mm -hmm. day and why he would allow penguin to keep going. There yep. you go. I mean, yeah, I did hear. Oh, well, yeah. Now that now that you're saying that it, it does make sense. But I think I mean, there is you have to suspend disbelief a little bit because you'd be like it's the same with New York and, and Marvel. You're like, why would anyone live here? 
you yeah, know yeah. Yeah. Like you would you would, <laughs> if you lived in this world you would find like the most the most populated places would be like montana and like iowa they would be like we want to be away from the yeah. like terrors of the city as much as possible yeah um but yeah uh i don't well, know the book is set like two generations before batman and mm -hmm. so like at this point like before like this is like the turning point of gotham is where like this story takes place because gotham was like the city to be in mm -hmm. and it was great it was this awesome city and then all of a sudden all this corruption took place and now you see what it is now um but it, it was rad and i love tom king um the art was fantastic um so if you're into batman check that one out for sure but it was it was one of my favorites i think this year it, it was really cool yeah it was fun listening to your podcast and um thought like hearing you guys go through all of these or just discuss them because again as i said before i just use your podcast as a way for me to like uh cheat sheet some books you know um <laughs> mark notes some books essentially yeah, uh, yeah so that's nice yeah yeah i would i would definitely be interested in seeing that fleshed out because i also like am curious in the premise of like gotham as like a whole and and how it turns into that and even just super villain origins you know yeah yeah um but yeah so kyle did, did phantom road count as yours or do you want to chat a different one uh phantom road can count as mine because i don't want to leave you hanging for too long uh it, it is it is one i have really enjoyed it's not one i wrote down but we're, we'll we'll put it on there yeah uh i mean like for me obviously I've, I've talked about this comic enough uh on this podcast but behold behemoth is definitely still, i knew like, it yeah, yeah yeah it's still riding number one for me like just the the um just the like sensation of reading a comic i really love when a comic can time jump really well i love that aspect of like pulp fiction you know, like of uh, not linear storytelling and not even necessarily of like, I'm fine when a story doesn't tell you anything. It just kind of needs to be like satisfying in and of itself or at least leave you with like, we weren't really supposed to tell you anything. Like one of my favorite movies is The Lighthouse. I don't know if either of you have ever seen it, but that movie doesn't really have a like. A, who's, a who's in that movie? Uh, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Oh, no, I don't think I've seen it. So, but it's just one of those movies where you watch it at the end, you're like, what happened? I don't understand, like, what happened. And that's how I felt, like, through the majority of uh, Behold Behemoth. It took me until, like, issue three or four until I was, like, really understood what was happening because of just, like, complex storytelling. But I wasn't turned off by that at all. I was super engaged, like, brought in by it. Just this, like, being... Uh, somebody who knew their story so well that they didn't feel like they had to like just come forward with everything, but that they could like, you know, it's like one of those things is like you have to learn how to like not just like as a songwriter, I don't just want to play like all of the same like big, big songs like right in a row. You want to learn to space it out and like mm. keep some things in your pocket until the right time, you know, um, the ebb and flow. And that's the comic Behold Behemoth was just like perfect ebb and flow, you know. So, uh, but I've said enough about that comic. No, so. you haven't. I want you to, if you could, if you could tell me or paint a picture in like a couple, like in like a, a snapshot, paragraph, like what is Behold Behemoth about? So Behold Behemoth is about a, uh, a like a schizophrenic man and uh, orphan uh, preventing or reverting the apocalypse. Mm. And the, the again, this is kind of where like it took a long time is you would see this giant behemoth show up, this monster, and you'd be like, where did it come from? Why is it fighting? And then it's revealed that it's the, the little girl and she transforms into this. And it's because of the relationship that they have between them that she's able to control it. And it it it's so like these behemoths are left behind by the gods when they leave so that Earth can be like maintained and mm -hmm. have bounds to it and so it needs a shepherd somebody to lead it and to point it in the right direction um so like that was like the narrative of just trying to fix like to set back the world before it was those times or to you know correct it in a certain way so honestly like it, from a certain perspective the people in the main two people aren't necessarily heroes because they are the ones that caused the apocalypse but they're the ones that are trying to fix it 
you know, it's one of those situations. So it's, it's again, it's a morally gray thing, which I really enjoy because there's people that are trying to stop them. And it's like, well, technically they're kind of right because they are monsters, you know, but it's, yeah, it's, you know, t a, a, the, there's depth to the storytelling there and nuanced characters, you know? So that's, that's what I love about it. Pick up the trade paperback. Have yourself a, a darn good time. I will say that name, I feel like it's such a good name. Behold, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What a yeah. rad title, yeah. man. It sounds like a, like a, on a, a band name, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like just good, like very, <laughs> just very like metal. Just yeah, almost. that's what I was just about to say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think there is a band called Behemoth. Yeah, but Behemoth, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they don't like God from what I can remember. <laughs> that's, that's all I can remember about them. Uh, There's a lot of metal bands like that. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Um, but at, anyways, so that, yeah, I mean, that's mine uh, for sure. And that'll just like hint, uh, like I would love for a comic to beat it because I always love having good stories. But whew, yeah, it's a good one. So Kyle, I'm throwing it back to you now. What do you got for us? Well, one that I surprisingly really loved is actually a, a YA, and I did we did talk about it on Lair, but not much. But uh, it's called Scurry by Max Smith, okay. and uh, just the artwork and the storytelling here. One one dude doing the whole thing. You know, I always have a, a soft spot for uh, just a. How would you describe that? Like one creator doing the whole jam? I don't. Yeah, know. just yeah. A, a, soul, a singular creator. Yeah. You know, the the vision of one artist. Yeah, and it's just about this little mouse dude who's, uh, you know, almost like the apocalypse for these little mice, and he's just got to be the hero, and he's traveling, you know, all all across the the land to to find a new spot for them all to live to find food because where they're at, you know, the food's running out and. Uh, he meets this moose along the way. Yeah, dude. He meets a, a moose along the way who's just this larger than life character, of course, because it's a moose and a mouse. But uh, <laughs> and the moose kind of <laughs> lets the the mouse travel on his back and. Uh, he meets some beavers too, and the beavers have this like wild. Uh, uh, what's the word for like structure of the way that they do things? Uh, uh, society. Yeah, like a, a an odd societal structure with like pop politics, like a hive or something like that, maybe. Uh, uh, they're, they're just like almost high, 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 hierarchical. Hierarchical. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hierarchy. 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 Yeah. Hierarchy. Yeah. Hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, just the 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 character character. Wow, I'm we're killing. doing great. Take a the, deep breath. Uh, <laughs> the characterization of all the animals and and things he meets along the way. It's just so much fun, and it's really cool uh, for for this tiny little dude to be such a such a big hero in the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I absolutely loved it. I don't know if you got to see any of the interiors in there, but it literally looks like that cover, and it's just super cool, man. Yeah, I actually was just uh, – I'll pull it up here. I just uh, just found it. Uh, it definitely looks fantastic. And, yeah, like, there's, dude. There's look nothing. at that. I love it. Yeah, it looks like it could be a movie. Like, it looks yes. like, uh, mm, yeah, like yeah. still shots from an, an animated movie. And honestly, like, there's nothing wrong with, like, reading YA novels because – or, uh, or, or novels. Yeah. But, like, because one of my favorites that's going on right now, and I've talked about this all the time, is the uh, Battle for the Pumpkin King, the Nightmare yeah, Before Christmas comic. Right. Mm. And it's very much geared towards kids. But, like, again, like, I just want good – stories you know yes. so and that's a hundred percent what it is so very happy to be be riding that wave at the moment but this looks this looks like a lot of fun this might be a rainy day one for me yeah and not it just was... because it, this panel is a rainy picture <laughs> dude i will say when you mentioned that book to me it was weird because i think like a week or so after that i was at my local library and that book was on the shelf I love and it. I almost grabbed it just to, to to go through it, but um, so I know where I can pick it up though and check it out. I would say the way Monk just said it is is exactly right though. It's just fun, cool story, mm. yeah. And uh, I think it's cool for kids because I mean that tiny little mouse who's up against the world, uh, having to be brave in the face of all all the the dangers, and it's really cool. So at one point 
like there's a there's a mythology in the woods of course there has to be mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and there's three witches who kind of know and can foretell the future and uh know about this prophecy sort of deal and the, the the three witches are these three red foxes and it's just such a cool characterization of them and the way that they speak uh, that's awesome i just love that whole book it was a ton of fun that's so cool yeah I'm, i might have to check that out i'm still looking at the art here and and super enjoying it so yeah. dude. there's some YA books that surprise the heck out of me that are super good all the time. Sonic. Sonic's a good one. Yeah, Sonic's cool. Another one that we both love that's technically YA, but is Friday. Yeah, that's what I was just that was my next book I was gonna mention. Oh, oh really? really? Have you ever read Friday? No, I read the uh first issue because it was a free comic day uh yeah. issue, but I I did follow along on your uh all your adventures with it. Oh so, man yeah that, that um and like this is in no particular order but friday i i think it technically came out like the very last week of 2022 and mm -hmm. I, it was first just digital uh, what website oh, okay. is it panel being syndicate on? Yeah. oh right yeah so it's being released on panel syndicate and i think volume three started i think the first issue is you can get on panel syndicate right now um i haven't read it yet but volume two um like I said, came out, I think the very last week of 2022, but I didn't read it until probably January or February. I can't remember, but it was just incredible. And it was one of those books that made volume one even better. Mm -hmm. Like looking back at volume one, it just, um, it, it was rad. It kind of reminds me of like, uh, like a Hardy boys or like Indiana Jones style story to like with, you have these young kids, they're like detectives in their own town and um the artwork is unique and fun and like one of the main characters um i don't want to say he's gone in the second volume but you, <laughs> like i don't want to how, how can you explain it like he's still very present yeah. and okay what, what well, goes he's down he's he's more of a background <laughs> character his his role he's is basically been, yeah he's so dead the, but his presence is still felt <laughs> wow the way they write it though is Bond, but not forgotten yeah it's so <laughs> rad and he like sets it up to where like it, it's it's just was really good fun story and like like a, it's one of those YA books um and it blew me away like when we first were reading volume one i think my one of my daughters read it before i did and she was like oh it's awesome and i was like yeah, i'm not gonna read this like i don't think that's for me mm -hmm. and i ended up reading it and i was like wow, that was actually really, really good. And then when um, volume two was coming out, I was so, so pumped. And like it, it made volume one way better too. And I know I already said that, but it, like even at the end, Ed Brubaker, I, he like puts in the, like there's some notes in the back of the book. He's like, go back and read volume one because there's stuff we hid in there that you won't mm. get or that you will get now after reading volume two. And so, um, it's pretty cool. That's yeah. another one uh, that has a hundred percent track record for me on when I loan it out, everybody loves it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we were big Ed Brubaker. I mean, still are at big uh, Brubaker fans. We just, I haven't read one in a long time, but you know, pulp is definitely one of my top favorite comics. Mm. Um, we have, I have a bunch of stuff by him over there. I can't even remember what it is because we were just like, I was just going to the comic shop and just buying the cheapest ones that I could find, just, you know, reading through those. But yeah, Ed Brubaker rarely disappoints. Um, so yeah, good call. I'm, yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm looking back on my wall back here to see like what comics I want to talk about. Uh, and I, I did want to say that I really, I feel like, at the beginning of the year was something that I wanted to do was to get into one shots more and specifically like one offs of like kind of more like weird, obscure stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm looking back here at gut ghost. I'm not a hundred percent sure that that came out this year or that that's what it's called. Cause I, yeah, gut ghost. I always, whenever I'm typing it out, I always type ghost gut, but for some reason <laughs> when I say it right, I say it right. Uh, but even if that didn't come out this year, it's it's one of my favorite comics that like I got this year just simply because it was one of the most like it was exactly what I was looking for. in so far as like the art was phenomenal, the um, the storytelling was just super absurd and like 
didn't need to be taken like super seriously because we talk about like we read a lot of like sometimes heavier like mm. more like narratively driven stories mm -hmm. and then that can just like weigh you down and just like oh i'm like oh, tired 100%. of yeah, yeah. like 100%. you just want like something that's more enjoyable rather than like you know um something that's sad all the time yeah and this yeah, yeah. like this is weird and it's gross in like its own way uh here i'll show you like i'm trying to find some like good art oh, i but... saw this on something yeah oh yeah. It's scout yeah so it's it's from scout i mean yeah just loving all this stuff um dude look at that guy he looks crazy yeah i mean it's just like it's the most like absurd story that you can find like it just it just is crazy like it's just a fun time and another thing that i can praise about is like there's it's just simple dialogue there is like a decent amount of it but like it's you're breezing through it again it's not like you're trying to like the the characters are all like very like natural in their conversation um so like this yeah the com this comic was like just right up my alley like i just wanted weird and like indie and just absurd and that's exactly what i got with uh gut ghost hey monk can i ask you a question sure buddy <laughs> <laughs> here we go dude oh I'm no the question king so uh, a couple episodes ago i can't remember how long you were talking about a book and i'm gonna say the name wrong but it's like rad rad wraith rad mm. wraith yeah so I talked they're coming about that out on with the... like a like a oversized one shot of that or something i saw for pre-order now is that which is that something you would say is worth picking up see i didn't know about that um yeah, if you go to like things for another world like tifa that's where i saw it it's coming out in a couple months they've got like uh i don't know uh remember what they call it but it was some version of it that uh okay yeah um scarecrow okay so fun box monster comics um limited limited virgin variant okay um yeah, I, this is the first that I'm hearing about it. It's uh, fifty dollars. Um, is it fifty bucks? Well, this thing that I'm looking at, fifty. I don't think this Shoot, is the same son. thing. Well, this is a fun box monster <laughs> comic, so I don't know if this actually has stuff in it. I don't know what it, exactly it is that I was I got looking children. at. Children. <laughs> <laughs> so who I, who puts that out? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no problem. It's Black Caravan, I believe, which was uh, or no, I, I yeah, it's yeah uh i see i'm I'm looking at the webs it's so it is scout it's scout comics and then they have a yeah. like, board division that is black caravan it's by black caravan oh yeah yeah yeah. okay so right now rad wraith double feature number one is coming out on october 4th for four dollars and 89 cents okay so then we're looking at something different i'm yeah. looking at like some sort of whatever and when did you say that was coming out october 4th it's a it's a double feature number one though okay interesting well that looks i'll have to look into that um oh yeah, that is cool uh but yeah so uh kyle once you get another uh another one and i'll pull this up real quick and probably There's so many uh, man uh i actually have my list is far too long for a, a couple <laughs> here but one that i wanted to mention because i feel like it's surprising probably for you two to hear me say it mm. uh outside of hearing my dog chip 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 all over the floor <laughs> um he's old and deaf so i'm not going to be able to get him out of here i'm sorry that's totally fine uh i've app uh, and it's probably going to end up like at, at year's end in my top uh but the the new fantastic four run by ryan north mm -hmm. i've been jamming that on marvel unlimited uh at the um recommendation of our mutual friend ross red optical core and i've just been blown away with it man it's just been a fantastic superhero story and uh, the characterization look at me go with characterization there you're nailing it this time at least yeah wow. getting it right but it's been great like the first four issues were just character spotlights on each of the four and each one was wild and crazy with really cool twists and uh i i still think uh ray you you you'd like it man you should jam it dude I'll have to check it out. I don't think I'm pulling anything Marvel right now or reading yeah, anything. That's one Marvel I'd highly recommend, dude. It's See, really cool. I I really enjoy the Fantastic Four. They're yeah. like, yeah, just they're a lot of fun for me. Um, I recently found out that they had like they have an animated show that's like manga influenced kind of or like, and it's on Disney Plus. I started watching uh, mm. some episodes the other day. It's ridiculous, but yeah, I 
I th- I love that comic or I love that premise that like this family dynamic and I yeah. love that it's like s- remained you know for as long as it has like s- over sixty years which is bonkers you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah um to just be telling stories for that long right but on. I, I will did. say I I just had a bad taste in my mouth from the old Fantastic Four movies oh, I don't get wasn't those out. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> See, I've never seen them, so I don't have that. I just have yeah. like, this like fun. Just I've read. Uh, I I used to have it up on my wall. I think John Hickman is that the name of the guy? He did a fantastic Justin Hickman. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I read that and I really enjoyed that. So mm. I've yeah, I've just always appreciated them. I've I've never really read anything bad by them, and I like. I just think it's like a fun premise. All of them have superpowers. One of them's a rock man. A rock you know? man, dude. Come on. What, what more could you ask for? <laughs> um, I. I recently learned that Sue Storm was canonically arrested for like making people's pants disappear in public because it's like uh, like pantsing people and in indecent exposure. <laughs> I think that was just some writer coming along being like, we're tired of her doing this. We're just going to make it. <laughs> we're make it that uh, she's not allowed to do it anymore. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah. But how about you? Uh, Ray, anything that you want to Yeah, to? Um, definitely another one that's um, actually just finished up, and I think we all might be reading it. I'm not 100% sure if Monk's reading it, but Local Man. Mm. I wondered mm-hmm. when that was going to make its head pop up here. Yeah. And um, it was just a fun, hilarious, like the art was so good, and um, I loved it. I know I had a couple like questions at the very last issue. We, we talked about this like last week, but... Um, I just love that world too. And I love cross Jack. I think he's a rad character and freaking de- cross Jack. De- yeah. Dealing with all kinds of stuff. He's everything he's going through. Like, I don't know. It makes it real. Like he, he's personable. Like you can, mm-hmm. like you can just, I, I don't know. You can just relate to him. Yeah. And, um, I loved it. So I, I'm stoked for, for the next arc to come out. And, um, yeah. Great. And, and on top of the story just being cool and all the things you said, I do think that the whole package of, of local man. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, is actually <laughs> like the way they do that, like with the, the back matter being mm-hmm. all like old school is such a, it's just a cool experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, I think that style of art, um, it's very similar to that Texas blood and public domain. And I feel like it's that is what I consider like new modern comic book art. Mm, yeah. Like it's very like and standard seems like it's, you know, it's a sh- like talking down to it. But just being like, no, this is like now what like you have to live up to to be a yeah, comic like the book standard. Artist. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm just yeah, I think that when I, I when I was reading that comic, it felt like exactly like a superhero comic is supposed to feel in 2023. Like all, I feel like Marvel spends a lot of time like trying to like make their superheroes like personable, and like what they tried to do for like years, I feel like uh, Local Man did in like five issues, no problem. Mm, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, no, good get that point. even busting a sweat. Yeah, I like what you said right there. Yeah, yeah. nailed it. Well, I'm gonna make a clip out of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make a clip out of it. No, but yeah, that's one of one of my favorites. I think this year it was um, it, it was a surprise, and I didn't pick it up right away. I think Kyle kept telling me, like, "Dude, you got to get it." I think mm-hmm. I picked it up uh, after the first couple issues, but it, it was great. You gotta I love do. those recommendations where you're just telling somebody to get it, and they're just it's like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." yeah. yeah. <laughs> get it. So, uh, are we back to me already? My God. Yeah. What do you got? got? Oh, nothing. Um, uh let me think here real quick i would definitely say that we talked about me and um uh now i'm scared yeah red optical court uh ray or not ray oh my gosh ross (laughs) i called him the rock this week dude you'll hear it it was terrible Uh, that's funny um but we did an episode on know your station so that's another one that you know Mm. i've already said a whole lot on but that like i it ended it wasn't like the it didn't nail the landing for me necessarily, but I don't think that that takes away from like how good and enjoyable that series was for me. You know, um, I can obviously like it's, and I think a lot of that, the ending just comes down to like perf- personal preferences about political opinions, which is like too much of a thing to unpack in like this format. But um, yeah, just have the idea of like this future, 
space station where you know the servants are all lower class people just taking care of wealthy people and there's a sentient station and murders start popping popping up across mm -hmm. like the ship like so and again like i i just read so many comics and this is, seems like it's just like i don't know its own type of genre now where like somebody's in space and they're addicted to space drugs and for some reason i love comics that are about space drugs and um yeah that was they it, and it, it was interesting because it wasn't just about um drugs but it was dealing with someone who was trying to get clean mm -hmm. and that was like a big subplot of the comic was somebody just being like they were trying to kick this space drug called blue and the station wasn't very helpful because it wasn't responding to actual like human emotions. It was responding to more of what was best for them in that moment. And it's like, well, you're having withdrawals. The best thing for you right now would be some more drugs, you know? Mm, yeah, um, yeah. And just kind of see like the uh, human have to like be like just the, the, the internal struggle of just, said out loud of any addict of constantly having to go back and forth between i don't want this i want this you know yeah um so i just i thought that was handled very well i will say how they ended up wrapping up that side of it was very good um yeah so it was it's definitely a comic i i enjoyed is that the same writer who did eat the rich yep. too yeah okay yeah yeah so, i know ross was telling me about this story too a while back all right. Well, we are getting close to our, our end of time here. Do you guys got one more you want to bring to the table for us? Let me ask you a question. And oh, I don't want to change the subject here, but I just got a question. Sure. And yeah. if you can shoot this one down if you want. Like the Hindenburg. Yeah. Um, That's not how that happened. That's what about like... <laughs> like, up, are, is there any like um huge like upcoming like releases coming up this year that you're like just stoked for or are you uh, not even no I, I i don't really follow that i would say the only thing that i can think of is that texas blood is having a spinoff mm, um and yep, that yep. is what i'm most uh excited about i'm trying to find the name uh is it the infield gang massacre Wow, look at you. Oh, my good. Yeah. How did you pull that out of your, your head? Because it's on his list. I wrote it down. Because <laughs> it's like one I'm like super stoked to look forward to later this year. It's like uh, like yeah. one of my ones I can't wait to read. So, yeah, I'm yeah. I mean, I love everything about how like this comic looks. It's just it's just it seems even more Western than like this Western comic. We might yeah, be losing yeah, yeah. like some of the noir aspect of it, but like overall, like getting a comic that like looks like that, like oh. it looks so much like just an old like pulp cover, you know, yep. and that's yep. so much where they get like their influences from. So yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked on that. Yeah. So am I, it looks so fun. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to sidetrack. Oh uh, no, totally. Yeah. Maybe that Texas. Well, I guess they're working on this. I don't know if they're going to do another ish, uh, arc of that Texas blood. I'm sure they will eventually, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to whenever that comes back around. But what's your uh, bringing it home uh, comic? Who are we going, Kyle? With? Kyle, let's do it. Do do bringing your home comic. Let's go. I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna do two because I I, I want to. Mm -hmm. and I'm taking the privilege of doing so. Something epic. Go. Uh, no. so far has been amazing for me. Uh, just the depth of writing and the, the artwork has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And in that vein, um, another one that I've loved, even though I've only read the, the first issue, though, the second one's out is, um, a vicious circle. Did mm -hmm. you get to read that one? Monk? No, no. Both the first issue been... was incredible. And the artwork is probably some of the, like, just it crazy. had to take them so long to do the art in that book. It, it was well, yeah. I mean, I just from the the cover, it seems like that. Like, yeah, I it, I was definitely tempted by it, but never, uh, never fully committed. I yeah. mean, there's a reason it's coming out only once a quarter. I mean, dude, it's got to take them forever to get that thing. Like, yeah, yeah, it's the artwork is phenomenal. Yeah, and another, I'm, I'm and another one I loved really. Oh yes, please. Oh my. Yeah, gosh. I mean, this I mean, is look like, at that, dude. Yeah, it's so incredibly detailed. My goodness. Like, you can see, like, just the detail is in, like, the bricks and, like, yeah, mm -hmm. whatever this guy's up to. He's got <laughs> shit in his pants. Um, but, yeah, that looks wild. 
and something epic has really great artwork as well um and one that i i read as well Bro, you said I'm, two i'm cheating again you I'm said two again. I'm, I'm going another one i loved click click boom number one so much okay. and i'm really excited to see where that goes nice we got a uh, three well i guess we're doing upcoming ones now so my i'm gonna steal the uh the gang one the massacre whatever that yeah, one yeah. was i didn't so, get to do my upcoming one those you, you did you ones. did this three yeah you did you <laughs> cut off all right all right <laughs> how about ray what what anything else that you're looking forward um, to yeah so um one that actually just released last week and i know it's only one issue out so far but the hunger and the dusk from idw mm-hmm probably my favorite first issue that i've read in a long time it was incredible like the artwork was fantastic the world building the characters um i don't know what else i could say about it i I won't even say the story like you if you need to you need to read it like even if you're like not a big comic book guy like this is a book like anybody could pick up and you're just like dude this is rad you're immediately attached to these characters Mm. and the world and um everything i've read like people saying about it they're like oh i think it was like a masterpiece wow. I, I, don't, awesome. I wouldn't go that far of saying it but it was like blew me away I, it was mm. fantastic and I, I think the first issue just came out um like it needs to be like i could see this being like the next saga like just mm. keep going um and i don't know if it's just a mini series or not but i could see it be, like being that long like a saga story where i could just live in this world for a long time right would you yeah. say that that is maybe like a maybe a banger of the week? <laughs> <laughs> banger for sure, dude. Like triple banger. It oh, was triple uh, banger. <laughs> it was fantastic. Like, I, I don't say that a lot, and it took me like when I read it. Like I think I text and called Kyle like two or three times a day. Like, dude, just go buy it. Like I don't care what you're doing right now. Like leave work. That's not important. <laughs> go go buy it. Um, so yeah, I I think um, that one is. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next issue already. Like, I can't wait. That's awesome. Well, guys, we are uh, wrapping up here. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for for coming and chatting these comics. Uh, it was nice to, like, walk down memory lane and just also get to chat some of these comics with you that, you know, we didn't get a chance to outside of, like, just one quick dm back and forth to each other just like you read this you read this good good yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah you know we've we've said this every time you guys come on but we've just you know loved getting to meet you guys and get to chat with you on and off mic and yeah it's just been a lot of fun for us so um yeah thank you so much for for coming on where can the uh, people at home find you guys uh, Ray, I'm going to take this one because that doesn't matter. And I'm going to leave everybody with this. Don't worry <laughs> about where to follow us. But do yourself a favor and go check out the new Transformers run that is coming out from my man, <laughs> Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. Do it. It's way more important than looking up the comic book layer. That's all you need to know. Oh, my goodness. that's a, That does sound really good. That is a good team. So on the I'm Transformers, stoked. that's going to be dope. Yeah. But Kyle, you you know where to or, uh, Ray, you know where to find people. Where can where can people find you at? Yeah, definitely check us out over on the Comic Book Layer. That's like our main uh, main hub. Um, I do have my own th- uh, like uh, Instagram over at the Comic Book Dad, and um, yeah, you can see it below. Yeah, so, yeah, right here we'll have those uh, your website, which is awesome, linked in the description, some other stuff. So make sure you go give those guys a follow, and um, yeah, they're they're. Pod, I was gonna say they're comic. If you had a comic, it would be a lot of fun. But hey, your podcast, we won't go down has... that memory lane. That's another oh, no. another story we can get into next time. All right, <laughs> I I regret I didn't say this at the beginning, but this is we call this the the uh, pool box layer. Yeah. yeah, and you know I I wanted to say this is another round of it. So I'm looking forward to round four. This is round three. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So well, dude, we appreciate you guys, man, and. Um, Dude, it's been great to meet you guys through this medium. Like this is, would have never happened if, you know, mm-hmm. like, so it's, it's been rad and uh, you guys are fantastic. Love listening to you guys. So um, thanks, right dude. Got you. Yeah. I apologize for my huge head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now we really have come full circle. Uh, Where's the I, horse? Wrangle I was just going to say, I didn't bring up the horse at all. <laughs> Kyle, do you want to, you want to get up on top of the horse and would, would you, you want to do the honors of, uh, of a uh, taking us out of here? I haven't read comics like these in years. There we go. (laughs) Oh, no.